giant size. Giant size. Giant size. <laughs> That's right. I'm trying to get my terminology right. Giant size, baby. What's up? You are watching the 95th episode of Collider Heroes. We're doing it live. Woo! Here we go. Yay! And we're going to talk about all kinds of cool stuff. And with me, joining me, is Robert Byronet. Meyer Burnett right here. <laughs> How are you, Mr. Chef? Uh, How are you, comic book girl? How hey. are you, Amy wow. Dallin? Yeah. Let me just say, can I just say Hector Navarro? <laughs> He's going down. Going down. With uh, Robert Friday. is talking about this the thing. Robert is talking about this thing called the Schmo Down, and uh, I guess they're going to be playing. We're going to talk about it a little bit later, but it's coming up. <clears throat> it's coming up this Friday. You know who's also here? Comic Book Girl on 19. Thanks hey! for being here. Hey! hey. I know. So I decided to come back, grace you with my presence. I'm Yay. so happy to be here. Yeah, we're happy you're back. Also, Amy Dallin, right here. I'm always happy to see you. Uh, and I'm always happy to be here. Hello. Hope everyone's having an excellent Tuesday. We are. Uh, Robert is, uh, you know, he's been gearing up. He's been practicing his trivia. So, you know, this Friday is going to be a big one. So, I have been I'm brushing up on Harry Potter. Definitely. Let's see that belt. Hold that belt up. That's Ooh, right, baby. Nice. So, Inner Geekdom Championship. You know, people have wanted this. I beat Hector twice. So. Yep. Well, the three wow. times a charm. Yeah, Let's gotta, see what happens. Yeah, yeah. Bam. Yeah, oh. So we're going to be looking forward to seeing that. But you know what else we just saw? We saw some magic happen on Super Bowl Sunday. That's right. Uh, and I'm not talking about who won. We're talking about the trailers. That's what us <laughs> nerds watch. We're like, I don't even know what sports really are. It's a bunch of dudes hitting each other <laughs> in different kinds of strange costumes. Sort oh, of like you got to give it up for yeah. Tom Brady and the boys. That was the most incredible comeback in all of football history. I had already heard the Falcons won. And then an hour later, I was like, what are you guys talking about? Yeah, it really was like from from beyond. I think yeah. you know the dark one came forward and was like, "I now give you powers," and then everything got flipped. It was amazing. Listening well, to it, like we had it on on the radio, I, I hadn't really been following, but like listening to the announcers just lose their minds when that one guy made that one catch. I'm gonna say Edelman, and that might be right. Um, <laughs> but they were just like, "Did that? Did that just happen?" Like, the, so apparently it was very exciting. Edelman, that sounds like a superhero. Yeah. Edelman. Well, made that was the a catch. superhero catch. Let me tell you, that was some mutant power receiving right there. Well, yeah. you know what? It was incredible. Struck me besides not watching the game and doing <laughs> other stuff with my life was watching the actual cool trailers online, which most of us nerds do. Uh, I, w I was really excited to see the new Logan trailer, uh, the Guardians of the Galaxy Volume Two trailer, and the Ghost in the Shell trailer. Now, a bunch of other trailers also dropped, like. There was a Pirates of the Caribbean trying to like grab that Johnny Cash jingle jangle. I was like, yo. So we're not really even going to get into that stuff. I was what like, whatever. Stranger, Stranger things. things. Stranger Things. We can Look, we all love Stranger Things. It's not technically a superhero thing, but it's so much fun. It looked Lovecraftian to me. You totally had some Cthulhu Ooh. creatures floating in the sky. I don't know what it's going to be, but October, baby. Everyone was like crybabying about Halloween. It's like, that's right. You have to wait, and it's going to be fun. <laughs> Why don't you relax? We're getting a second season. Everybody's crybabying about, oh, yeah, wait, wouldn't it suck if they didn't make a second season? Think about that before you complain about stuff. <laughs> anyway, what we're not going to complain about is that Logan trailer. Robert, what were your thoughts about the Logan trailer? You know, any time... I don't want to steal your thunder and use your terminology. I'll let you use that. But every time I see X-23, she, I just want to see her kill more and more and more. <laughs> Wait, what is Amy Everyone does? is welcome into the We Love You're Little Murder Girls Murder Girl. Club. Okay, there we are right. accepting all yeah. applicants. This movie looks... You know what I love about it? It looks... Uh, it's not huge and over the top. It's not full of histrionics. Mm -hmm. it likes, it, it's a guy in a, a pickup truck going fast is what is what is action packed in this trailer. Right. I love that. I love the fact that I'm not seeing some world being destroyed or buildings being uprooted. That it's you know, there's a dude running through the woods like slashing people with his claws. That's what I want to see. Trying That's to take care of, a, of someone who's just like him. That's it. To yeah. me, it's like it, it, it's like, like the me. road. It's like the searchers. Whatever. The just, Last of Us. I can't wait. Amy, your thoughts about this? I mean, I'm into it. Uh, I, I liked the song choice. Like, Amazing Grace was a cool way to sort of take their, their Western setting. And then, like, I, like as, what, as much as songs always get sort of awkwardly cut when you try and get them into 30-second pieces, but the sort of repeat on Wretch Like Me, like, it's on the nose, but it's pretty rad. Mm -hmm. Like, for the, the whole thing that they're doing there. Like, I don't want you to be a lost soul like I was. It speaks very much to X-23's story. Uh, and uh, we'll see where it goes, but I'm into it. Have yeah. you seen the new tra the poster, the no. one sheet for Logan? No. It is fantastic. It's just a dead-on close-up of his face looking just just like 90 miles of rough road. Wow. And that's it. And I'm like, I'm in. 
Well, you know what? I just revisited the Old Man Logan original comic, Mark Millar, Steve McNiven, which has got the hillbilly hulks. It's got, <laughs> you know, spider girl. It's got the spider buggy. I mean, it's pretty kind of weird. stuff we are not going to see. Yeah, we're not going to see any of that, which I'm totally cool with. I just like that they... They dibble dabble a little bit. We're going to take a little bit of this. We're going to take a little bit of this. We're going to take some of that flavory Western influence. And we're going to make our own Logan film. So I'm, I'm really looking forward to it that I don't know what it's going to be, but I feel like it's going to be something really special. We're going to see what we've always wanted to see, which is a hard R rated Logan berserker freak out. What are your thoughts on this? Yeah, I think that of all the Logan movies that we've seen, there's been some bad ones oh, yeah. and then some mediocre, okay, but still we finally get an R-rated Wolverine movie and like that's what we've all wanted for Hugh Jackman for so long and this is supposed to be his last time as Logan. So I would love to see him go out on an awesome note and get to do like slice and dice some people finally. I'll be happy if I see that. I'm excited for X-23. I'm a big fan of X-23. I remember I was reading NYX mm. when she first appeared, mm -hmm. and I was just like, whoa, like, this is so great. So I, I've, I feel like I've been there from the beginning. So, And I love the road trip aspect that's totally. going on where we have – Professor X and Logan and X-23 on a road trip. Like, you know, you have Grandpa in the back. It's totally. just like, quit fighting. Like, yeah. you guys. <laughs> They're, I think. like, stopping off at the Quickie uh, Mart. And it's just like, I mean, uh, that's, you know, this, this is the movie that I think we've all been waiting yeah. to see. So it's got a lot of potential. Very excited to see that and a good trailer. Another good trailer was the Guardians of the Galaxy Volume 2 trailer. For myself, <laughs> like, I think the, the way that Marvel and, and just in general has been presenting their trailers where they show you a little bit. Then the next trailer is just a little bit more of those same scenes. Then the next trailer is a little bit more of those same scenes with maybe one little extra nugget thrown in there. And that's how this was. This was like introduced like, who is that person at the very beginning? The golden woman. We don't know who she is. She looked very Kirby-ish to me. But I was like, I don't know what character that is. Can't wait to find out. But then little elements of everything that we've seen before, but some extended stuff. Amy, what were your thoughts? Well, we, we do know some things about that. We don't know how they're going to use it. But she's Aisha, right? Based on the like all the off screen casting stuff, um, we I'm don't. Not sure. I mean, the, the the Guardians versions of things are always a new version anyway. Right. So I'm comfortable just checking like yeah. That's my what I heard. At the door. That's that's what I uh, heard. It was. But like things her. are get things get used in unusual ways. Obviously, this Mantis is a different Mantis than we've seen. Right. Um, but like, but I mean, it's just it's just fun. The spot is fun, and it reminds me how much fun I had watching that movie. And it's completely doing its job because I'm just like, yep, there's gonna be jokes. Uh, there's gonna be action. And I'm pretty sure I'm going to be into it. How about you, comic girl, like Dean? Uh, yeah, I mean, James Gunn is, I mean, he delivered last time, and I'm excited to see what he delivers this time. I love the soundtracks, obviously. Those are, like, such a great part. Like, even in this uh, trailer, I was like, oh, it's just so good. Like, I, I think they keep getting me with that song in the trailer. That's the new thing the to do Fleetwood in trailers. Mac the Fleetwood Mac version. Right. was like, yo, Mac. come on. <laughs> Fleetwood, it was, like, so cool. It was yeah. just like, Kids, oh, if you don't know who the hell Fleetwood uh, Mac got is, me. James Gunn is going to turn you on like, to the legacy. I mean, so there's so good. many amazing songs. One of their most so famous good. albums turned 40 last week. Which one was that? <laughs> One, One of them. I don't know. <laughs> well, hey, probably rumors. Uh, let's stick with that. I love rumors. Stevie Nicks, come on. Yeah. But you know what? Uh, the other two are getting back together and doing something. I don't know if they're going to call it Fleetwood Mac. It's going to be Mac Attack. Who knows what it's going to be? <laughs> gonna uh, be. Minus, uh, minus Stevie. But you know what? I love this trailer, too. Uh, you know, May can't come close enough or quick enough for me. Um, yeah. What are your thoughts on Guardians? I have a huge crush on our new character. Mantis? She's so cute. <laughs> yeah. She's so cute. And yeah. her voice, I mean, Watch out! Oh, too late. Uh, right, that was uh, first of all. Is Dave Bautista the most valuable player in the Marvel universe? I think so. Marvel He's Cinematic Universe. So, I'm I mean, so happy for him. I love seeing wrestlers do well. Like I'm totally. just like I, I love mean, The Rock. It, I love him. Like keep going. I think that James Gunn really found something in him. You know, and his comic timing. It's just so good. Yeah, it's so good. Every every trailer that's had him say any of his lines was like. I love Drax. I mean, Which, uh, who yeah. would have thought Drax would become my favorite yeah. character? I would well, have I don't to know be in the room where they were sort of discovering, like, I don't know, in rehearsals or at table reads, where everybody kind of, like, probably one by one was like, this guy is hilarious. <laughs> like, That's right. Give him more jokes. Totally. Like, There's no hot totally. toy of Drax yet. They've announced it, but where is it? Why can't I complete my Guardians on the shelf? I well, cannot. Robert Meyer Burnett, you will be able to complete your Hot Toys collection, but will you be getting the Scarlett Johansson ghost in the shell? Because that's the next trailer we're going to talk about. What yes. are your thoughts? If there's a hot toy of that, yes, I will. I've had many Ghost in the Shell figures over, over the years. Um, <laughs> I, yes. First of all, I think that movie looks fantastic. Yeah. I, I really think it looks great. Uh, I, I hope it's great. But um, that trailer was very... 
they, they really played up the nudity aspects yeah, of that to of that degree. character. Yeah, who was completely nude. I yeah, mean, she's a robot, but she was. Compl- I was like, wow, that's that was a it's a very form fitting bodysuit, <laughs> which is completely basically nude but white. But yeah. you know what? For myself, I love the original Ghost in the Shell anime. I mean, it's one of Me my too. favorite animated films. It's so well done, and it also explores things in a similar zone that Blade Runner does. Yes. Like, what is it to be a human being? Certain high-minded, highbrow, you know, subjects, which sometimes are dumbed down in action films. And it feels like this movie is a straight-up adaptation, but just adding even more layers to it. So I'm really interested to see. I mean, because some of the shots from this new Super Bowl trailer were literally like, "That's right out of yeah. the. That's right out yeah. of the movie. Yep. That's when she's fighting that weird kind of spider crab thing." It's like yeah. so many shots, but like yeah. done in a kind of refreshing way for myself, having seen that original film so many times. Your thoughts, nineteen. Um, well, it looks great. It looks like candy. I mm-hmm. mean, but a lot of things look great. So it's like, we'll see. Because I feel like I, I like the anime. I love I love watching the anime. I just love, like, the animation. The story itself for me is, like, it's good, but it's a little frustrating. Just like Blade Runner. It's like, it, it just, there's, it's not quite tight enough for me. So I don't know if, like, this movie will, might also be frustrating to me if they're mm. just doing what's in the anime instead of like, but maybe they'll tweak things. Maybe they'll make it different. Maybe I'll like it. Maybe I won't. Yeah. We'll see. I feel they're going to tweak a, a few elements of the storyline, especially the end part of the storyline. Yeah. I, I feel that way. How about you, Amy? It does look visually spectacular. Uh, I'm, I'm, I'm very impressed with that. We won't know how the like ideas come across. It's funny because like, I think I bonded harder to the standalone complex than I did to the original yeah. Uh, yeah. Ghost in the Shell. But like, there's a lot of interesting stuff there. Y'all know I'm always going to sort of have mixed feelings because I wish they'd gone a different way with casting. But, like, right. here we are. Agreed. The movie's coming out. Uh, and, like, I so in terms of, like, have they executed their vision pretty well? It looks like they probably have. Um, so I'm yeah. hopeful that it will be a good movie. Right, I like the I, Well, I like the idea that there's something in the – I guess it's always been there, but as we approach the – what Ray Kurzweil called the singularity. <laughs> yes, you know, we're yes. getting more and more. Uh, that's you should get that book. That's kids. a great book. That's mm-hmm. a great book. Uh, the singularity is near by Ray Kurzweil. Uh, but the, this idea of of AI and sentience and all that. You you've got Westworld. You know, you've got Ghost in the Shell. Mm-hmm. We've seen things like Ex Machina, got which Blade I've Runner twenty forty nine, Blade Runner twenty forty nine. I mean, this whole idea of of and Cylons. You know, Battlestar Galactica mm-hmm. back in the early aughts. If some people remember those days, mm-hmm. um, <laughs> I, I think it's really interesting. I mean, yeah. I, I really think that this idea of what is can a machine, the ghost of the machine, can it truly sure have a soul? And and if so, why? And if not, why not? I mean. Roy Batty had a soul, right? Because he'd seen things you people wouldn't believe. Oh, yeah. yeah. Limited lifespan. You know, I just gave humans a shot. I watched the first episode, and I kind of liked it. I heard that it. was great. I heard it was yeah. way better than Westworld is what I heard, but I haven't uh, seen it. I really enjoyed Westworld, but you know what? Humans has a different take on it, and I actually was like, wow, you know what? They got me on the first episode, and usually when you have a pilot, you have to be like, let me watch three of them, Yeah. because they just, they're just they finding the ground on the first and second, and then they start rolling really in the third. This one kind of got me, so... Uh, you know, robots are really in this year. Uh, you know, what's not in is Batman. We don't know what's going on with the Batman movie. That's right. Who's going to direct the Batman? And who will finish writing the Batman? We don't know who's directing the film right now because ben, ben Affleck's out. Uh, how about George Miller? What about Zack Snyder, Scott Derrickson, Doug Liman, Denis Villeneuve? Well, who's going to finish the script? Supposedly Ben Affleck and Jeff Johns were writing it. Now we're hearing Chris Terrio has a draft. Uh, so we don't even know who's writing it. Is it a page one rewrite like they're doing with The Flash? Mm-hmm. Is Deathstroke still going to be the, the main villain? Or is this new script going to throw in the Joker from Suicide Squad? We would all like to know what the hell's going on with one of my favorite characters in the DC universe, Batman. Amy, what do you think is happening with this? I wish I knew. <laughs> I, I mean, they're not good signs. I, I thought they had a script, but I guess... Ben Affleck told us, if the script's not there, I'm not going to direct it. And he yeah. isn't directing it, so I guess the script wasn't there. Right. Um, I, I want to see someone really unexpected come in. I want to see, like, a lot of things that won't happen. Like, I want friggin' Scorsese to be like, you know what, I haven't done a Batman movie. <laughs> like, right? I, I, I want something that I'm not seeing coming. I don't want, like, a best guess cobbled together, like, all right, well, we're committed to Deathstroke because it'll be a PR disaster if we go back on that, so just make it work. Um, I don't know if I'm going to get what I want, uh, which is, like, the, the perfect hero rushing in from left field to be like, I've got an idea, we're going to make this work, I'm going to help you rewrite the script, and it'll be great. I hope that happens, um, but I don't know who. 
my, myself personally, I would love for them to adapt like some version of Grant Morrison's Arkham Asylum and chuck a little hush in there. I mean, there's ways. <laughs> chuck a little hush. Uh, there's in ways there. to have all these fla- yeah, little hush. fucking nuggets like sprinkle over. I mean, it's <laughs> Batman. We got 75 years of awesomeness. Right? It doesn't just have to be Deathstroke. It can be you can have the Joker. You can have all but these. But I don't characters. want them to pick five different storylines and then kind of mush them together. And that, like, I well, want them to have one story that they're like, this is the story. Yeah. This I want to put my millions of dollars where this is. They can have that, but with Arkham Asylum, and you can get to reintroduce all of the brand new versions of the DC Rogues Gallery for Batman. But that's I'm down me. With that. that's I good. would like to see that. How about you, Robert? Well, you know, I love the idea of the Terminator as the villain because I wanted to see one of my favorite Moon Knight stories was issue 25 <laughs> of the Mencius and Kevich run, where there was the Black Spectre. Mm. There's the anti Moon Knight. You know, this guy's running for mayor, but he's really a, a villain. You know, and he dresses up as the Black Spectre and goes after Moon Knight. Like, I would do that, would be the Moon Knight movie I always wanted to make. Mm-hmm. Uh, but I like the idea that because the Terminator Deathstroke is kind of a mirror of Bruce Wayne. You know, they have alter egos, they're both rich dudes, they both have, you've got Wintergreen and then you have Alfred. Right. And I, I, I would love to have seen that sort of dichotomy. I know there's the dichotomy between the Joker and Batman, which is on sort of the two different sides of madness. Right. But what if the Terminator also had a code of ethics that he was following, and the two of them found themselves at ethical odds, sort of a civil war, if you will, between the Terminator and Batman? That's what I was looking forward to, and I thought that would be great, and I don't know if we're going to get that now. How about you, Comic Girl 19? What are your thoughts? Well, uh, you know, as as a lot of Collider people know, I'm not the biggest DC movie fan that's been going on. I feel like their direction has been... They they haven't yet completed a movie that I feel is solid for me. Like I feel like they've uh, they've had a rocky start here right. with a lot of different things, and this Batman thing just keeps just it's just I it just doesn't give me faith that this is going to be the one either. I don't know what's going to happen. What I think is really interesting is I I enjoy kind of watching Ben Affleck. I like watching him and like seeing what Ben Affleck is doing. The meta story? Yeah, the (laughs) meta story of like what's going on here. And like Ben Affleck's not in a place, I think, where he can do this. Right. And uh, I think that he got involved with something that, I don't know, maybe he was having like a really manic day when he decided to like get involved in this, but I think he's regretting his decision. I mean, first of all, you could never direct Batman dressed as Batman all day. Like, like, do you know how hard it is to get in and out of that suit? My friend... (laughs) Puts him in and out of that suit. I've heard stories. Yep. Like, it's crazy. So, like, I don't know. It's, uh... I think you're right. I mean, he probably bit off a little more than yeah. he could chew. But I think that's only because he's a fan of Batman. I think. Yeah. I think, you know, my hopes, even though I have no inside information on this, my hopes is that whatever the story and script is are still from his original script. And they, yeah. you know, I know that they've had a lot of other people working on the script. Maybe they can unwork it or rework it back to something that he feels more comfortable being yeah. in. Because remember, he's also producing it and he's also starring in it. So he's going to have a lot of sway in it. He's well, an executive that's, producer. And that's a lot of, like, responsibility, though. A ton. Like, because it's like, you, okay, so he probably wasn't exactly excited with Zack Snyder directing him. Because right. he probably feels like he's, a better director. I'm just saying like what I think is going on behind the scenes. And um, and so now he's like, well, I'm going to do a good job. Like, this is going to be my turn. But mm-hmm. then now he's like, oh, no. Like, I don't know if I know how to do this. And then it's like the whole, I don't know. I just, he might walk from the whole thing. I feel like there's a chance that he might walk from the whole there thing. There is a giant yeah. chance. And the only thing <laughs> that I would say would, 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 would hold that back from happening is lawsuits. I mean, because remember, he's in Wonder Woman. He's in Justice League. He can't yeah. possibly get out of this thing if he even if he wanted to he has to stay silent he's in silent Whoa. mode because if he says something he's jeopardizing billions I of know, dollars so I know. it's um, fascinating it's, it's a fascinating. very it's interesting maybe they're going to do the thing that i've heard them talking about where he's the older batman and they're going to you know flashback style talk about some of the old the younger just batman. batman beyond it just be like we're skipping the entire yeah yeah batman yeah, yeah let's you're going to train terry just go i yeah. wouldn't <laughs> actually be mad at that you know i looked up a, a comic book from 1984 it's called bat the batman special it's written by mike barr drawn by michael golden and it's basically Batman fighting the yin-yang of himself, a character called the Wrath. Now, remember, like we're talking about Michael Golden. If you don't know who this artist is, he's the artist from the Micronauts and a billion other amazing things. Look him up. Enjoy that. Google that. Michael Golden. 
you're welcome. But check it out. <laughs> Batman Special, now that's a comic that I think they're drawing special inspiration from, and The Wrath is basically gonna be everything that Deathstroke is, because he is the mirror version of Batman in a more modern way. But check out the special, it's just called Batman Special, Michael Golden, easy way to search it. But I feel like that's actually the inspiration, because he's actually also just like Bruce Wayne, he's lost his parents, but he's a murderous, almost like the nemesis Mark Millar version of Batman, he's a villainous mm -hmm. Batman. So yeah. it's really kind of cool the way they wrote the story, where you actually have to have of Batman's morals and ethics, you know, online. It's like when the Batman fights the Punisher. It's the same type of thing, or when Daredevil fights the Punisher, you have that yin yang. So mm -hmm. uh, we're hoping that, you know, they figure it out soon. Um, but you know who figured it out the best? His name's Jack Kirby. And <laughs> yesterday is uh, unfortunately uh, the anniversary of his death. Uh, in 1994, he passed away. But it is the 100th anniversary of his existence, as is today, for this whole year. He was around. You know, he died in 1994, but everything that he created from him starting out with Captain America, with Joe Simon in the 40s, all the way through Stan Lee's co-creating the Fantastic Four, the Avengers, the X-Men, uh, you know, the Inhumans, the Thor, Iron Man, Hulk. I mean, it's an endless amount of incredible. Did I say Fantastic Four? Let's get with it. Come on. I mean, the Fantastic Four alone introduced Galactus, Silver Surfer, Doctor Doom. You name it. Jack Kirby was behind it. He moved over to DC Comics, popped off the new gods of forever people, introduced Darkseid, who's basically the big bad of DC now. Um, so I want to, if you don't know about Jack Kirby, you want to check it out. In fact, Comic Book Girl 19 has an awesome special. She's doing a show now called Greater Creators where you can check it out. Guess, the very first it's one so good. is all it's about so Jack good. Kirby. I haven't even had a chance to watch it yet. <laughs> I'm so excited to see what she says about Kirby. But we're going to sweat it up right now, just talking about some lesser-known Kirby Beautiful, beautiful stories. Number one, we got Machine Man. Check this flavor out. That's right, it's Machine Man. Check out those goggles. He's known as X-51 if you checked out Earth X with Alex Ross. They were able to adapt the idea of Aaron Stack and what it is to be a human or a machine. That's what uh, Jack Kirby was dealing with when he tried doing Machine Man. At the same time, when his return to Marvel came about, he did this other comic book series called Devil Dinosaur, that's right, <laughs> with Moon Boy! Woo! Now we got Moon Girl! <laughs> so if you want to see something that I love, I love Devil Dinosaur because it is freaky. It's weird. Look at these giant space aliens attacking <laughs> some ape dudes and a bunch of dinosaurs. It's so much fun. It's so crazy. Definitely check out Devil Dinosaur. <laughs> we got a revised version of the New Gods when he also came back to Marvel a few years later with the Eternals. That's right. Now, I personally feel like if you like Guardians of the Galaxy, you're inside a Celestial's head. <laughs> Remember that? The Celestials have already been introduced in the Marvel Universe. You saw one of them walking around in a video from the Nova Corps. I cannot wait to see how they introduce the Eternals. My guess is it's gonna be in Thor Ragnarok. We're gonna get that flavor, but the, the Eternals are coming at you. They haven't announced it yet, but that's gonna be phase four, guarantee it. We got mystical monsters also when he was rocking over at DC with the demon. Now here's another amazing, untapped, great storyline. That's right, Merlin brought forth this demon to fight Morgan Le Fay. Check out all this craziness. Look at that guy with his creepy cat when he gets another devil, another demon, I'm sorry. The, the, the stories in The Demon are so much fun. I mean, it's, it's less about Satan and more about just crazy <laughs> monsters. So that's what I would say if you want to get into some of the Kirby stuff. They have those all available in collections, or you can get those individual issues on eBay for like eight or nine bucks. You're missing out if you don't check it out. But let's also go into the very last few things that Kirby created before his passing, which was Captain Victory and Silver Star. Now, he was really kind of dealing with the idea of what it is, what is the future of man? What are genetics, the genetic code? What are we gonna become? And, you know, I mean, definitely the art style was starting to lose it a little bit because, of, you know, it's it an older dude, you know, it's like it's becoming a lot looser, but in the same sense, some of his ideas got even more cosmic and even more out there. So I think Silver Star and Captain Victor are totally worth examining and checking out. But let's talk about what of these popped off to you. Let's start with you, 19. Um, well, yeah, so uh, the pilot episode of Greater Creators is all right. about Jack Kirby because I love Jack Kirby and I felt like if you're going to start with one, like we got to start with like the king of comics. Yo. Um, Jack you, Kirby. You put in a shout out for the creator rights, which was amazing. Yes. Was yeah. Yeah. We definitely made sure to talk about the creator rights issues because like I am fascinated not only by his work, but by the man himself. Mm -hmm. Like this guy is like insane. Like the amount of work he put out was just like, 
crazy. Like people do not put out this much work these no. days. And recently, uh, like a year or two ago, there was a Jack Kirby exhibit. I think at CSUN. It was so amazing. It was oh really yeah. Good. Um, yeah. And like just to see how effortless it, his lines look because he would just do it all day, every day. Four to five pages a day. It was just like it's just wow. uh, just amazing. And he came from uh, the Depression era, and yep. that's why he worked so hard. Like he that really made an impression on him when he was a kid. He's like, I am never like I'm an, I'm here to work, and like I am not gonna go hungry like I did when I was a child. And he was a scrapper. He was in World <laughs> War II. He was a scout in World War II. He went downstairs to go fight some like Nazis in New York. And, yep. like, they weren't even there. Like by the time he got down there, like he's just so like this guy is just personally he's amazing. Not yeah. only is his work amazing, but like him as a man is amazing. Some of my favorite stories. I never got to meet the king, but some of my friends actually got to meet him, and <sighs> other friends even got to hang out with him while he was drawing. So <sighs> those are stories that I like to hear because I get to live vicariously yeah. through that. Yeah. But just hearing about how great and welcome he welcoming he was mm -hmm. to anybody who loved comic books. He yeah. loved sharing that kind of vibrancy that we all have. So, mm -hmm. I mean, I think honoring Jack Kirby is honoring everyone who's ever been involved and interested in comics. And by calling him the king because he is the king of comics, mm -hmm. that's one of the things that I love about Jack Kirby. Not just his amazing ideas and his personality that came through in everything that he did, but the man himself. Robert? Well, you know, I grew up a skier. I wasn't a surfer because right. I grew up in Seattle. No one really surfs in Seattle. The Black Racer. <laughs> Jack That's Kirby right. Created, yeah. created when I was a kid. It was like the Black Racer. There's an he's a new god. Yes, yeah. he is he's a new god. And he brings death. He's he brings yeah, death, he's and, and he skis. That's so right. I was like, wow. There's it's not the Silver Surfer. He's the Black Racer, and he's on skis, which I just yeah in the sky in the sky. Yeah. And I'm just like you know, it was like you you watch um uh uh like Galaxy Express nine 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 where you've got a, a train in space, not really sensical mm -hmm. but there's a train in space i kind of felt that way about the black racer so i also loved his 2001 comic oh so good didn't machine man spin out mm -hmm. he most certainly did he was called mr machine right and i remember those two issues because i being a, a little young nerd was buying the 2001 i was like wow i really like mr machine then cut to he's got his own comic now he's called machine man i can't wait to buy that i know? mean yeah i, I <laughs> reading the 2001 comic when i was a kid first of all why would you adapt 2001 as a comic book but Jack Kirby did. He did. Because if anybody could do it, it was you know, him. the idea of, of the monoliths oh, yeah. and the way no one drew the discovery, the, the ship in uh, 2001 the way he could. Mm -hmm. I, I'm, I'm a big fan of all of that cosmic. I mean, Galactus's helmet. Oh, yeah. Come on. Yeah, that's a, a work of art. A work oh, yeah. of art. Yeah. And we need to see that not a stupid purple cloud. So yeah, yeah, when are we going to yeah. see Galactus in the real form? Probably pretty soon. Hopefully phase four, if not earlier. But yeah, I agree with you 100%. Amy? I, that's, I mean, part of the genius of Kirby is he was never afraid to go big. He, like, there were no ideas too cosmic or crazy or out there for him to try and do, but he also, like, never left that humanity behind. Right. This is what, there are a lot of, there are a million amazing Kirby stories. I love the one that's possibly apocryphal, that when he was switching from Marvel to DC, uh, that he went to them and said, like, that he didn't want to take he didn't want to take anyone's job, mm -hmm. and yep. that's how he ended up on Superman's pal, Jimmy Olsen. The, yeah, like, that's right. <laughs> Industry-leading superstar, and, the, and he was just like, I don't want to kick anyone off a book, but I want to come to DC. And, and they were just like, well, I guess Jimmy Olsen needs an artist, and that's where he created Darkseid. So the first appearance of Darkseid yep. is in Superman's pal, Jimmy Olsen. And a follow-up with that is he also said, I don't want to take not only anyone's jobs, but I don't want to be involved in any of the top-selling books. Give me your lowest-selling book. And that was Jimmy Olsen. Yeah. They were like, Superman's pal Jimmy Olsen. I think seven people are reading them. And I was like, let me have that. He added a weird Don Rickles character in there. I can't remember what his name, Mr. Snappy or whatever. There's so much weirdness that he pops off in the first four issues of New Gods, Forever People, Mr. Miracle, and Jimmy Ol Superman's pal Jimmy Olsen. Which are all collected. The fourth oh, yeah. world, his fourth world books are all collected into these great hardcovers. Well, no, That's right. no, no, good luck getting it now. That is, out of it's print. out of print. Oh, yeah, it's out, out of print. The hard Guys, no, sorry. They made so the, hard. Yeah. They made I've been trying so hard to get one. You it guys can borrow mine. I totally yeah. have them. We so. haven't shouted out Commandy the Last Boy on Earth. You're and absolutely I right. I feel that is wrong because Commandy the Last Boy on Earth is so much fun. Uh, it is a world of animal people and there's a little blonde boy and he <laughs> is in a bunker and That's that right. bunker is Command D. Yep. And they just go with it. And like if you have commitment, you can make these larger than life ideas work. My, my coworkers have a game called Kirby or Shakespeare. Oh, nice. Um, and you pull out <laughs> old like things, uh, Etrigan the Demon, like who is frequently depicted as speaking in verse, and even when not in verse, like this sudden sort of, of heightened language uh, is a thing you run into a lot, where they'll just grab random issues of the demon and, and right. like random plays and be like, all right, 
You guys ready? Kirby well, or Shakespeare? That's you got to make a, a show. Of I want to see. They do that. it. They, you can uh, the House of Secrets Facebook page. Nice. They do this on Tuesday night well, sometimes. Alan Moore <laughs> is the one who actually gave the demon his rhyming. Mm. But it's like the dialogue in the the demon comic that Jack Kirby wrote is also really fun. It's big. It's out there. Everything he always did was like explosively like new ideas. Blah blah blah. blah. He's just like blasting them out. I think. Uh, Jack Kirby is someone, especially, yeah, I'm glad you mentioned Command Command D, because I used to call him Command I. I didn't know it was like Command D. I just didn't put two and two together. But I love the dudes that he ended up hanging out with. He turned into metal. You remember they were just like, hang on a second, I'm wearing the special spacesuit. Silver Surfer. Like, just looked like Colossus all of a sudden. I was like, because I love his later anchor, Mike Royer. He would just add that extra, like, shiny aspect to Kirby's art, which has made it so sci-fi. Yeah, so, I, well, Oh, go ahead. Well, I remember I was watching this documentary about him, and there was these two artists. Um, I can't remember their names right now, but they were talking about how they were hanging out at Jack Kirby's home, and he was like at his little desk, and Roz had brought them sandwiches. Mm -hmm. His wife, Roz, is always giving everyone sandwiches. And how they watched him draw a page from one diagonal to the other diagonal, not like putting out panels. Like he would just start in the diagonal and then draw a whole page out of his head. It's like, <laughs> That doesn't even make any, like, if you're an artist, like, that doesn't even make sense. Like, it's right. like, what are you? Like, that's <laughs> insane. Like, and they were just so incredulous. Was, he is Kirby. It's an amazing, there is only he's one. A god. Like, yeah. it's like, one. what? You know, I, I was going to say, when I, when I was a kid, there's a science fiction film that everybody should watch called Forbidden Planet. Oh, yeah. Mm -hmm. came out in 1957, and there's an alien race called the Krell. Mm -hmm. And you see the Krell Labs. That's the only time, I think, a Kirby-esque, I don't know if it was based on Kirby's work, because it was from the 50s. Right. But it looks the closest thing on cinema, the closest thing in, in a movie that looks like something from Jack Kirby's world is the Curb, is, is the Krell Labs in Forbidden Planet. And I think you were going to see something like that come about in Thor Ragnarok because everything I'm, I'm hearing is Taika is actually taking some of the designs, the cosmic designs so. of Kirby and infusing that into whatever they're, the planet Hulk <sighs> world that they're going to be in. So Hello. very excited about Thor Ragnarok because wait. it's going to have a lot of Kirby flavor in there. Yeah. Honoring the, the Jack King Kirby. Go out right now, pick up a couple Kirby volumes. I also want to mention the Captain America return run that he did in 1978 with Marvel. It was like the Mad Bomb and all this other crazy stuff with him and the Falcon. It's just so much fun. If, you, if you're not familiar with Jack Kirby, get into it. Any time period from the 40s, the 50s, when he was just doing monster magazines. Oh, the and then 60s. he like, took time out to invent romance comics. Oh, yeah, and he That's invented right. romance comics. <laughs> yeah, yeah, it's like, it became the best selling yeah. genre of he the He hung out, did monsters, like, westerns, and romance comics, and he invented the romance comics. You're, I mean, he is like just somebody just like checklist, checklist, checklist. If you want to learn about comics, get into the world of Kirby. We're going to get into minor mutations right now, starting off with. The Runaways, they're all cast for Amy Dallin's favorite brand new <laughs> Hulu series. It's coming at you on Hulu. Number two, we've got Kevin Feige says, only three scenes are going to take place on Earth. The rest are going to be beyond the, be beyond the nine realms in Thor Ragnarok. Hopefully at least five of them are Kirby worlds. Number three, we've got new Justice League photos of Cyborg, Wonder Woman, and Aquaman have shown up. Looks kind of cool. I don't know what spaceship they're going to be on. Looks kind of alien geegerish. I don't know what's going on there. Um, number four, we've got Darren Chris is playing the music meister, and he's singing in the musical Flash Supergirl crossover. It seems like a lot of Glee fans are really excited about this. Number five, we've got going back to basics for Marvel Comics characters. They're following the DC Rebirth lead by saying, yes, I know we got all these different kind of characters, but we're going to go back to the original <laughs> characters. What? Don't really know exactly what's happening. No. We'll see what they do. They That's a comic one. universe. It's so um, six... Okay. Will Hugh Jackman finally don the Wolverine costume in Logan? So we're getting all these tweets and pictures that Hugh Jackman no. is showing. He's like, check out this costume. You're never going to do that. Is it <laughs> possible? Never. He would look ridiculous in that. How weird would it be if He's it's too happening? Tall. We don't know. He's too tall. He's just the comic. Is, the, the outfit is completely ripped. Um, shredded, we've got Thanos is going to be the main character in Infinity War. That's right. That's what everybody's saying now. You're going to get a whole lot of Brolin talking about, you know, being angry with the gauntlet and stuff. Hopefully it's going to be awesome. And I, I think they're going to tie Thanos into all the different storylines. So I think that's how they're going to make him the main character. Number eight, we've got... Rumor has it that the X-Men Supernova feature film is going to be the Dark Phoenix Damn. saga, and supposedly they start shooting that in May. So let's get into this. There's a whole bunch of things uh, that we've li listed uh, off. 
Uh, I know 19 has got boiling. Can't uh, wait to talk about Supernova. Uh, but let's get into something a little less hate-filled before we get into that hate. Amy, what pops off to you? Well, okay, we will start with, as you pointed out, my runaways. Um, That's honest, right. You know, one never knows what any particular prodigy is going to be like, but like, I choose to be extremely excited about this. It's very interesting because they've they've changed up the cast in some ways. Uh, two of the characters uh, are Latina, which is really cool. Nice. Uh, and it, I've been thinking about this a lot because Runaways is. It, a book I deeply love, but it was about teenagers in what is now, it was 2003. Right. Um, and so it's an interesting thing, like if you're casting it with teens now, you've got to make some changes because it looks different to be a teenager in 2017 than it did in 2003. Right. Some of them are going to have different attitudes, but I mean, basically they picked the six original runaways. This is a fantastic sign. Uh, spoil yourself by reading the comics first. Those versions will always exist, but I, I'm, I'm very excited for this cast, and uh, and we can get into some of the other stories later. But don't believe every comic book rumor you hear, because some people are in the business of making you angry. Right. Just well, throw I mean that that, out there. that one thing that we talked about, back to basics. I think they're going to keep a lot of the storylines and new characters, and then also do some kind of offshoot. I don't know if it's going to be like a pocket universe. But let's not Heroes take Reborn. like inevitable stuff and act like it's news. Com things change in comics. If everyone's a legacy character right now. Everyone knows that in two or three years, some of the originals will come back because it is comics, right. and we've always known that. Yeah. So it's not, it's not like, oh, they're reversing course. It's like, it, in other news, it's 2017 now, and sure. it was 2016 before. You know yeah. why it's news to me? Because I'm excited. I'm, hope, I'm hoping that they're bringing the Fantastic Four back with a brand new creative team. And that's, to me, it's exciting to say, see that they're going to stick around with the female Thor and uh, Wilson as as uh, as Captain America. So I, I want to see that, but then I also want to see what they're going to do. With yeah, these I'm sorry, I'm versions. popping off with anger because I, I feel like people are going to treat it as some big like if it's just like let's be excited about what's coming next. Right. Yeah, I'm on board. Yeah. I'm on board for whatever's coming next. Uh, and I'm sorry for jumping off. No, the no, head. no. <laughs> Don't apologize. I think everybody was worried about the DC rebirth, and I thought like that was something that actually got me buying DC Comics again because I was like buying maybe one or two a month. The Rebirth had me, I think I was buying like eight or nine. That's what it's designed to do. And I tried a bunch <laughs> of different comics and I ended up sticking around with four of them. So they actually got two more that I would buy a month. Well, I just, I get so frustrated with this whole like new number ones every six months yes. to a year. It's a new Rebirth, it's a new thing. And because of that, we'll get a title that I really like for only six issues and then it's gone. Right. And then I've invested time and money in this. I've invested, emotionally invested in this. And now it's just like, whatever. And we got to get new readers and we got to get new titles. So frankly, like lately, I haven't been reading anything Marvel or DC because I'm just tired of like the way they treat me as a, as a fan. Right. Like it's not the way it used to be. So I kind of just been... I Rocking on that image tip. I think there's yeah, so many amazing. Yeah. Well, that's the greatest yeah. thing about comic books right now is like, when hey, look. You're wrong, just leave for a that's while. That's right. You're like, I'll you come know? back when you finally get it together. Yeah, and you're like, yo, yeah, exactly. I'm hanging out with image right now. Oh, I'm sorry. They're like crying about it. Yeah. So maybe they'll change it, whistle a different tune because we'll they see. want those original readers back, Robert. Well, you know, to, to me, it, it, it's like even when you have a run of, of X Men, for instance, when Grant Morrison came on board the X Men, I was so bored. Of of like the two hundreds and the three hundreds and X Men. I mean, every you did just variation on a theme, variation yes. on a theme, and then suddenly Grant Morrison takes over. There's Cassandra Nova, you know, yeah. The, yeah. the baby that was in the womb with Charles Xavier, trying to choke yeah. him out yeah. when they're yeah. in the womb. And, and I'm like, I'm like, I don't know where this came from, but suddenly I was on the X Men tip again. Oh I'm my like, god, because the X Men were like Star Trek to me. Growing Hell up. yeah, I love the X Men. Yeah. And, yes, and and it was still part of the regular continuity, but they went back and it felt. Like it was starting from scratch. With and Frank this, Quietly's artwork, oh, the new yeah. X Men, you could just rotate oh. and be like, "Who thought of that?" It's it was the new X Men. Oh, it was so just, cool. It just the the gene in the in but the what white queen right now, just in the Scott but, Love Triangle. But the oh, thing is, so it was hot. just a good story. It was a good story with great. a great creator team, mm -hmm. great artist, great writer. Yeah. And why do they this idea that that they they are building in this idea of speculation, like mm -hmm. ooh, everybody's going to go back and buy a number one. Exactly. Right. There's no money to be had in in new comic books. Right. You know, no. you might get, you might have collected New Mutants, and you might have New Mutants '98. Right. You know, you might have bought that, but that was by accident. Correct. Yeah. You know, you can't ever get rich. It's like Hollywood. You can't ever get rich tra chasing a trend. In How many Spider-Man number ones are there? At least forty. Yeah. Well, like, and, and it, they've it, all come out in the last three it, years. It, it's just crazy, and you know, it it, it doesn't it, it it's just it's not the way to treat. Just start over with a new creative team. Why? And now they're gonna. Sometimes they bring back the numbering. Right. We did go back to number one, but now well, we're yeah, going yeah. back oh, to six hundred and eighty-seven. Yeah. yeah. Right. 
Okay. It's an unsolved problem. Uh, like, right now, there's definitely too much going back to number ones, but there's also an ongoing difficulty of getting people to jump on in the middle of runs. Uh, yeah. And right now, like, they've struck a number of sort of unsatisfying compromises. You have books uh, that are carrying two different numbers where it's like, it's issue 13, but it says number one because it's the beginning of a story. And you can yeah. always see where they're coming from, but every solution has its own potential problems. Yeah. Uh, I, I think... I don't know where the numbering thing is going to go. Uh, the massive success of Rebirth in that right. regard is going to be an interesting thing because, like, what are they? They're shipping a bunch of books twice a month. What are they going to do when they get to twenty-four? Right. Uh, nobody knows sort of long term the answers to that. I think what you have suggested very accurately here is just focusing on the creative side of it, yeah. putting the right creators on the books. Not about the numbers. Yeah. Well, look at you know Black what? Panther, when they, when they have yeah. a literary figure yeah. come, I can't pronounce his name correctly. Coates is the last name. Well, yes. yes. Do you think it's Ta-Nehisi? Yeah, t yes. Oh. How, how do you pronounce his first name? I think it's Ta-Nehisi, because I always thought it, it was Ta-Nehisi, Ta and someone Coates. corrected Ta me. Coates. Yeah. Well, mm -hmm. when they brought him on to Black Panther, suddenly Black Panther sells out. You've got a whole group of people that wouldn't normally buy comics mm -hmm. that go in to pick up his work. Yeah. And and suddenly, hey, it's a big selling comic book. I mean, that's the way to get yeah. people to buy comics. Moon Knight, yeah. Jeff Lemire. I mean, that's got some yeah. Twin Peaks, yeah. Lynch th oh, stuff yeah. going on. It's so amazingly good. I think Marvel or DC, I don't care who takes it, but they should take a hint from the way Marvel is numbering their movies. They're not numbering. The last numbered Marvel film was Iron Man 3. Yeah. Now, guess what? Every single Marvel film, it's called Thor Ragnarok. It's called, it's whatever the title is. They should take a hint and stop with the numbering and just release Oof, a that, series. That creates long-term problems, though. Look, I mean, I, something to solve me having it'll be like, well, I'm, I'm looking for this beast, one no comic. Matter what, you know? Yeah, I would like to see Iron Man and then come up with a subtitle. I would love to see that instead of Iron Man issue one of 55th different Iron Man number ones, which is what exists right now. Yeah. So it's a weird problem. Yeah, it's a problem. It's, I mean, <laughs> it's a look, problem. it's a good problem to have because we still get to read comics. Not we're trying to complain and cry baby about it, but it is a problem. It's like it's it's exactly what Amy said. It's stopping new readers because they're like, where am I? I don't I don't want to jump into the middle of issue three. It's like, well, this is the fourth version iteration of issue three. We've already got seven other. You know, it's like, yeah. where do you start? People are just like, I want to see him fight Whiplash. Well, which Whiplash? You know, like which storyline <laughs> yeah. do we want to go to? It's something that's going to be an ongoing thing. I'd like to see it solved eventually. Myself, personally, I'd like to see it. In fact, I'd like to see floppies go away, and I'd like to see like books being published, like maybe even quarterly, but every week a different quarterly book. You have the Batman family, you have the mm -hmm. Superman family. I think well, that would be a well, cool way to do it. You could also do like the monthly issues. I feel like monthly issues are going to go away. I think it's going to have to be digital, mm -hmm. and you'll read those digitally. And if they do well, then they'll put out a book, like they'll print an actual print run of right. it or something. Like I feel like that's how... I see it potentially going. But what you're saying is the floppies are like roughly three. I even hate saying floppies. I, I love. I mean, I'm I love saying, them. No, I know, but I if they're fucking comic books. Yeah. I'm just gonna call them what they are. The floppies, <laughs> go fuck yourself. Can't believe I'm using your shitty terminology. I'm gonna call them comics. Thanks. <laughs> comic books individually are like three ninety nine to four ninety nine yeah. right now for roughly anywhere from sixteen to twenty two pages with yeah. a bunch of ads in there. Now, if you went. To produce, like, say you had like you had Batman, Detective Comics, you had maybe Robin, Batwoman, Cat, you know, Catwoman, Batgirl, whatever, whatever kind of world that you want to fuse in there, and you make those, and they're nine ninety nine. Imagine how many more you'll sell. You yeah. just do a trade paperback and a hardcover for the full on sweaties. The hardcover could have like some script notes and some yeah. extra drawings and stuff. You are gonna double down Jesus. with your money, and then you make put out one Batman book a month. Yeah. Then put out one Superman book a month. And put make out, it a good one. <laughs> make them good. Make it a good concentrate one. on that. Concentrate on your storylines. I personally think that's the well, future I'm, because I'm into that. Uh, you know what? I've tried reading digital comics and I like it. I because, don't like it. No, I mean I'm I saying, don't like it. but I like reading comic books more. I yeah. love trades. I love hardcovers because you get the whole story. I want to smell it. I'm not a you know a lot of people are like smell that comic. I'm, I'm like I am. I know. I like no, there's certain comment. people like, want to smell that comic. I'm touch cool. It. I just I'm. I'm cool with holding comic and flipping pages, but the digital thing doesn't bother me that much, but I would like to see it change a little bit. You well, know? you know, I'm with you. I don't buy individual comics. I buy, I love the Marvel omnibuses, mm -hmm. and I love the DC Absolute Editions and their deluxe right. versions of things. Not only have I gone back and bought most of my comic book collection again, right. but I find myself reading comics more because, you know, I've got, I still have like 65 long boxes of comics. Oh, yeah. I never go into them. Nope. I don't know what's where. I know. You know, I just don't look at them. I, I, and when I do look at them, I'm like, ugh. <laughs> I, you know, I don't even want to go what into a pain in the ass. Yeah, yeah. But, but, but I like having a wall. Like, yeah. I like going into yeah. your comic book store because mm -hmm. there's a wall 
you know, a nice L-shaped wall full of graphic novels and yeah. right. hard covers and all that but stuff. See, if and we switch to trades only, like how frequently can you get them out? Can you maintain interest in two volumes a year? If you're Saga, you can. People will wait like six months to read the next chunk of your story. But there's not every, like, is that going to work for I think a tra- I think a trade every week. I'm talking about every week where you, comp- you can, DC would be like putting up three trades a week instead of like 60 comics with at least 40 of them no one reading Mm. so i think it's like we do have a weird like we have an abundance of amazing products there's actually great work being done at both of these companies like there's there's the the mark wade chris somni black widow amazing and like great things are going under the radar because we have so much yeah um like nobody checked out ultimates and a force and avengers and new avengers i checked out a force now it's gone oh yeah (laughs) there were four different books and not enough people like so i don't know but scaling back is if you scale back then it's even harder to take chances on weird stuff like i don't know i have a counter argument for every amy you add the weird stuff into the things that you already know are going to sell you have avengers you add a force into that so you're automatically selling it your item is saying, look, we're going to give you, for the price that you would pay normally for two comics, we're giving you six comics. Because it costs us so much less to make these comics, but you're going to buy them. So many more people will buy it if they start doing it that well, way. Well, look people at- will complain. I spent nine ninety nine and I only got 20 pages of the, the book that I was interested in. And well, people are going to complain no matter that's what. True. Well, that's, well, if that's you go true. back and look at, look at what they did, I always talk about uh, JLA 114. Right. I think it was 114, which had the Crisis on Earth S or three, one of the crime syndicate. Mm-hmm. It, uh, it wasn't the original crime syndicate, but it was a new issue of Justice League. But it was full of reprints. You know, it was a hundred page giant sure. size. Yeah. Do that. You know, I mean, put out new books, but add old stuff in. So maybe attract new readers. That's always uh, a tough one though, because those the, when they were doing those reprints, it's because they they were like they couldn't afford. Right. It was like a different world when you were like, <laughs> hey, this Batman you know. family is pretty cool. They're like, we're going out of business. Like we didn't. <laughs> as a kid, I was like, this is great. You know, I didn't know <laughs> that's like dire circumstances. I would like to see like an industry like both Marvel and DC are in a pretty good spot. They've got a lot of ancillary product that they're making a lot of money off of, which all came from what comic books are. I want to see comic books stay where stay current and important and the only way to do that is to move forward and to get rid of these individual issues i love going into any comic book store and seeing a bunch of old comics because i still buy old comics obviously you're like hey you're gonna buy that one i was like yeah <laughs> i don't care i like them i like old comics i love i love buying i just bought some like a bunch of stuff and i'm gonna talk about what i bought i'll just post it on instagram but you know buying old comics is fun don't be afraid to go into those back issue bins and find a couple. They're like three or four bucks, and it's all that flavor. You know, this was minor mutations. Yeah. And I, I, I did want to talk about every time I see a picture from Justice League, I get excited. Yeah. You know, I see. I people, think it's great. People are like, you know, Cyborg looks a little small. Well, he's he's standing in the back. He is standing right. in the back. I mean, I, I don't like Cyborg in the Justice League anyway. Right. But I love Cyborg because he's a New Teen Titans character, and New Teen Titans is my favorite superhero team of all time. Yeah, the 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 Marv Wolfman, George Perez, new team. They're Titans. getting close to that baby because you know what? With Cyborg, if they don't introduce Nightwing in Batman, somebody killed Robin because there's a, a costume floating around in Batman right. v Superman. So we know that I guess Harley Quinn and the Joker are involved in that. Is it Dick Grayson? Probably not. Which version of Jason or which version of Robin is it? Did Dick Grayson go to Bloodhaven? Is he Nightwing now? Is he going to be Batman oh, in the all new? A red herring. All this stuff. <laughs> Who knows right now? But I want to see Teen Titans. I just want him to call it Titans. Well, the Judas Contract animated film's coming oh, out, yeah. but it's the new 52 version of the Titans. Well, yes and no. It's a, it's a combination. Combo. They they did a combo. So, you know, I've, I've got a bunch of friends who worked on it. I could vouch for it looking awesome. I haven't seen uh, it It looks yet. great. But, I haven't uh, seen Justice League Dark yet. It's on my pile at home. Justice League Dark. Can't wait. I'm going to watch it eventually. Um, Twitter <laughs> questions. Let's get into this. <laughs> Adam Lucci's asks if you could choose a canceled movie to be made, Justice League, Mortal, Mortal Spider-Man 4, etc. What would you choose? Now, you know what I'm going to say. It's just <laughs> obvious. Superman lives. I still want to see that movie. I made a documentary about it, which you can get at tdoslwh.com. Plug and pimp and son. But check it out. What other movies? Robert, what film that never got made would you like to see? You know what? I wanted to see a follow-up to Superman Returns because I... You know, knew what Brian was going to sure. do with that, and we talked a little bit about it, and, and uh, I think it would have been cool. I, I'm I'm sad that Superman Returns never had a film made. Right on. A sequel. You know, I, I I love the, not because they're good, but I love the uh, old Fantastic Four movies. Not the Corman one, but the, and I just, I, oh. I like, let me see your crappy Galactus. Like, let me see it. Like, I want to see, like, what they would have done 
uh, just out of like sick curiosity, morbid curiosity. Which version? You know. Well, it's like the Jessica Alba team, like right. that whole team. I want to see them just whatever their third movie was going to be. You know, they mm. they had the Galactus Cloud. Right. You know, they had Silver Surfer. Right. They had a shadowy moon type let's thing that looked how like a helmet. Let's see this looks. Right. Like, how I sucky it would have been. Like, well, you know, I would never say that, but I, I, I hear what you're saying, <laughs> Amy. Uh, well, it's, it's, uh, it's moot now because I'm very excited. Like, y'all know I'm counting the days till Wonder Woman. But mm. I would have loved to have seen Joss Whedon's Wonder Woman. Back when everyone was like, I don't know if that guy can make a feature film. Right. Um, I I think that is a very interesting combination of creator and subject. And uh, yeah. I, I, the script may have been leaked, and it's very interesting. Yeah, Joss Whedon is a super uber talent. He's a writer, director. He's a monster. He's a comic book writer. He's a geek. I would have loved to have seen any of the projects that he didn't get to make. Yeah. So, because the ones he did make are awesome. Uh, well, let's let's go with when iPhone Seven Plus asks, <laughs> could Deadpool Two make fun of La La Land by having a very violent musical opening number? Well, when iPhone Seven Plus, um, I would love to see that because I, if you didn't see La La Land, which I actually really enjoyed, you know, a lot of people have complaints about it. Ryan well, Gosling can't sing. Why don't you relax? It's like. It's, different kind of movie they're not supposed to be like amazing tap dancers whatever um i enjoyed it i would love to see especially now that i feel like a la la land is going to sweep the oscars this is going to dominate unfortunately for people who didn't like it it's up for 14 i think it's going to win 12 if not all of them so uh amy what are your thoughts about seeing dead deadpool do a musical opener I mean, y'all know I'd be in for that. That you don't even have to, like, I mean, it would be ridiculous. It would have no place in a Deadpool movie. But the thing is, what belongs in a Deadpool movie is whatever they decide would be really fun to put in a Deadpool right. movie. That is the star that has gotten them this far. Uh, I think it'd be a weird way, like, t yeah, technically it would be, it, it probably wouldn't work. But would I decide to enjoy it? Yeah. What would work is Hugh Jackman, who can sing his ass off, playing Wolverine in costume, dancing his ass off in the opening for Deadpool 2. I call in it, son. That's what's going to happen, <laughs> Is I hope. it wrong that I'm incredibly excited once Logan is out for people to super cut together Jean Valjean and Cosette from Les Mis with Logan and X-23? Like, <gasps> yes. Yeah. No, that's not wrong. I want to see that. 19. Um, sure, I'll, I'll see it. You know what? I think it would be great if Ryan Gosling, if Deadpool got to kill Ryan Gosling... Also, Ooh. if he showed up, because Ryan Gosling has a good sense of humor, I totally. think he'd let himself get. Yeah, cool. sing it, Starry Night. Yeah. Yeah, just... yeah, yeah, some kind of crazy yeah. cabaret murder scene would probably be the correct way to do that. Yeah. Cabaret murder scene. Cabaret murder. Love it, Robert. <laughs> well, if you go back to a movie like Hudson Hawk, where Bruce Willis would the, and Danny Aiello, they would sing a song, and that's how long they had to rip off a bank or something. Mm. Yeah, swinging you know, on a star. Swinging on a star. Yeah. And you could do because it was like three minutes and twenty-two seconds long. But you could do, you know, City of Swords. <laughs> I am slashing just for you. Yeah, you know, something there like that. Go. Deadpool with this thing, you know. Cool. I cannot wait to see it. This better happen. This is such a good idea from sure. iPhone Seven Plus, whatever the hell your name is. <laughs> Uh, thanks for <laughs> thanks for that question. I think it's great. Jesus A. Gastelum Jr. asks, "Who was the bald guy in the Logan Super Bowl TV spot?" It's Caliban, also known as the actor Steve Merchant from The Office and a bunch of other Ricky Gervais stuff. He is rocking as Caliban. Don't worry about X Men Apocalypse because that had a different Caliban. We every X Men movie is a completely different time period and time zone and different multiverse. So that's who it was. Simple answer. Anybody want to add any more flavor to who Caliban is? Well, we don't know who this Caliban yeah, is. Right. Yeah. Probably not our Caliban, but hopefully really cool. I've never right. seen anybody from the X-Men comics in the X-Men movies. So, <laughs> like. Well, this is a version of Caliban. We'll see what kind of how Caliban-y he is. Yes. Greg in the movies asks, who would win in a fight between X-Men's Banshee and Black Canary? Robert, what do you think? Banshee? I mean, Black Canary can't really fly. Mm -hmm. You know, I mean, Banshee would kick her ass. I mean, I understand, like, like Black Canary is her twee, her mm -hmm. super, I get it. They're going to, she's going to twee and Banshee's going to roar. Right. But Twee? Well, isn't that what, how they spelled it? Like, she had the, sub -cyper, the supersonic twee? Okay. Like, in the comic, didn't they call it that? Like That is twee. so sweaty, I love it. I, I didn't remember. <laughs> like, that was, that I was never the, paid attention to the Anna Lampia in question. Yeah, yeah I mean, I think bad. that's what, you know what, what they called it. Burnett did, so. They yeah. called it, like, it was called, like, the super, or whatever, subsonic super. The twee. Or, or twee. Yeah. <laughs> that was the sound she made. That, and what that was Banshee's? Take you out. It's just the canary cry is what I always call it. Oh, well, yeah. it, maybe it's because I'm old. No, you know, probably, as Hector, as Hector right, Navarro points right. out, that's right. Um, uh, you know, uh, but but uh, yes, I think I think Banshee would 
would win. How about 19? Who do you think would win? I mean, as a mutant, I got to stick with my mutant homies. So I'll, I'll go with Banshee. If Canary got close enough to him before they actually started screaming at each other because of her martial arts skill, she would to completely snap his neck. And he'd never have a chance to even inhale. But if he was flying up in the air, she's done. She's dust. Yeah. She's gone. What are you thinking? I'm with John. Uh, I, he's like he's got sort of special agent training, but I think like from a distance he'd have an advantage. But as soon as they were anywhere close, Black Canary's like crazy martial arts stuff. Like she's as as a fighter, that's more like what she specializes in, and I think she'd probably take it. That's right. You know what? We've got to the sweaty question of the week. It's from Glenn Myron, and he asks, who is the better photographer, Peter Parker or Jimmy Olsen? Has either won in-universe awards in the comics? Well, I don't know how many awards they won in the comics, like in-universe. That would take way too much like researching and Googling that I'm not going to do. But I like the question, who is the better photographer? I'm going to have to probably go with Peter Parker, from all the Jimmy Olsen comics that I read, which are very few, because there aren't really that many. After Kirby left, forget it. They were like, just cancel that. And then he was like a sideline character for a while before he completely disappeared. Um, to Peter Parker, who is basically, he's Spider-Man, and he's always taking photos of Spider-Man fighting other villains, because that's how he was making his money for at least a long time through the Daily Bugle. What are your thoughts? Peter Parker, Jimmy Olsen. This is a great question, and I have never thought about it before. Uh I would probably go Jimmy Olsen. Jimmy Olsen has more of a chance to focus on his craft, uh, notwithstanding yeah. the fact that in his actual book he spends nearly all of his time like getting turned evil and becoming a monster. But like, Jimmy Olsen is like photographer first, other stuff second. Uh, Peter Parker like ha is amazing and manages to do a bunch of different stuff. But like, how much time do he has to invent web shooters? He can't spend all his time getting good at photography. Totally. That's what Robert, I'm, like. I'm with Amy. I, I think Jimmy <laughs> Olsen's an artist. I think I think Peter Parker. It's an avocation. It's kind of his job. Right. He figured out a quick way to make a buck by shooting pictures of himself fighting villains. Right. Whereas I think that there's probably a art, a coffee table book of Jimmy Olsen's photography, probably put out by Toshin. You mm -hmm. know, oh, some I giant. That. I want that black and white book of Jimmy Olsen's photographs. And Jimmy Olsen travels around the world. Goes I through mean, boom tubes, two apocalypse, and new genesis. Is where's those photos? He is a true photojournalist in every sense of the word. You know, he's not, and, and whereas Peter Parker is not. So you're saying Peter Parker is more of just like, I'm doing this as a job because my jo real job is I'm Spider-Man. Yeah. So it's just like, I got to pay the rent. Whereas Jimmy Olsen is like, look, I'm Superman's pal. I got a radio watch or whatever, some Dick Tracy shit. But photography is my thing. So as far as who's the better photographer, I'm going to personally, I'll split the difference. I'm going to find out from 19 what her call is. But me, myself, because of even actually what you do, both of you just said, originally I was going to go with Peter Parker, but I'm like, if Jimmy Olsen definitely, you know, we're adding some flair here. We're like, I don't know if he was ever, I'm an artist. I don't know if he actually said that shit ever in universe. But maybe when he wasn't in the comic and he was like taking a big dump, he was like, you know what? I am an artist. And I'm looking at my proof, my photo proofs, and I'm going to have an art show because check this weird photo out, which does not have anything to do with Spider-Man or Superman or anything. So maybe he's like, the eye of the artist, the mind's eye is goes to Jimmy Olsen, but the Better photographer, as far as for print and getting money, could be Spider-Man, Peter Parker. So I'm going to split the difference. I'm going 50-50. What do you think, 19? Well, this is such an absurd question. <laughs> <laughs> this is, I, you know, I would have to say, because, again, Peter Parker gets to be, like, awesome, whatever, Spider-Man. I would go with Jimmy Olsen, too. Because, like, I mean, he doesn't, people make fun of him all the time. Like, he doesn't get to be Spider-Man at the end of the day. You know, so I want him to be the better photographer totally. just because that would be, you know, I am. So you would tell that, him, yeah. like, yeah, Jimmy, you're really you're, something yeah. special. You're the, yeah. this is you. You might be like, Superman's pal, but you're a real artist. Yes. Yeah. Remember, he <laughs> worked for the Daily Planet before Clark Kent got there. Yeah. That's true. So, I mean, he was clearly hired by Perry White because of his prowess behind the lens. No doubt. Perry so. White doesn't mess around. Yeah. Great Caesar's ghost. That's the end of the episode. <laughs> Definitely check out Burnett versus Navarro this Friday. Schmodown. That's right, ladies and gentlemen. The Inner Geekdom Championship. We'll see who uh, walks away with that belt. Um, check it out. You're going to see Heroes next week, number 96, as we slowly crawl towards episode 100, which is going to be a giant-sized <laughs> super freak fest of awesomeness and sweat. So... Get ready. It's going to be freaky. It's going to be awesome. I want to thank my guests, starting with Robert Meyer Burnett. Where can people find you online? Well, you can find me uh, on Instagram at RM Burnett or on Twitter at Burnett RM or on my Facebook page at Robert Meyer Burnett. 
Comic Book Girl 19. Thank you for coming back and being on the show. Oh, Where can people find thank you? Thank you. Thank you for having me. Uh, you can find me on Twitter at CBGirl19, on Instagram at Comic Book Girl 19. I'm on YouTube. I just had a meme episode come out. And my new show, Greater Creators, is premiering on Tuesdays on the Go90 app on your phone. So you can check that out there if you want to learn more about Jack Kirby and a bunch of other awesome people. Definitely check it out. We also have a show with Jeremy Johns, and I'm doing these comic book specials where I kind of give you an information overload. If you like a movie, I'm telling you which comics to to actually buy and read, and that's awesome tacular, also on Go90. Check out Go90, it's just like YouTube, you just have to sign up, it's free, check it out. Now you have another reason to go, greater creators, I cannot wait to see what Comic Book Girl 19 talks about with Jack King Kirby, I can't wait. Amy Dallin, where can people find you online? You can find me at Enthusi Amy pretty much everywhere. I'm on YouTube at youtube.com slash Amy Dallin. Uh, I'm all over Geek and Sundry, but I'll, whatever, I'll tweet it all. Woman Just about town. Me. Yeah, mm -hmm. she's playing vast. <laughs> I saw some pictures of her like, getting her uh, geek on, playing vast, I'm, some sci-fi stuff. I'm getting stuff. to do so much RPG stuff right now, and it makes me so happy. It looks exciting. You're making me want an RPG. I'm, I'm not even an RPGer, and I'm like, man. I have dabbled. <laughs> you I'm love a it, man. I'm a tabletop dabbler, and every time I've done it, I'm like, all right, I'm down for like doing the 12-hour journey. I'm like, once I'm in, it's risk, son. You're not <laughs> like, ah, I quit. No, 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 no. So coming risk. soon, Pandemic Legacy, all y'all, saving the world from diseases. Let's do it. All right, well, wait, you have a game about pandemics? Have you not played Pandemic? You're going to love I, Anything to do with diseases and disease vectors <laughs> and people dying. It's one of my favorite things. It's a co-op game right. where you try to save the world from various infectious diseases. It's been out for All a couple right. of years, and there's... Anyway, y'all, board games. We might be playing a board game very soon, and we'll let you know. I'm John Schnepp. You've been watching uh, episode 95 of Collider Heroes. I will, I'm will. i on uh, just on YouTube and other things like that, <laughs> at John Schnepp. It's a live show, so I'm all <laughs> gibble-gabbled. I can't even talk. Just find me on Facebook and Twitter and Instagram, at John Schnepp, and uh, I'll see you guys next week. Hey, guys, if you like this video, click the thumbs up button. Also, make sure you subscribe to our YouTube channel. It'll help you stay up to date with everything we've got going on here at Collider.